So it's mid-March here in Maryland, and last week we had a couple of days get into the 70s. One day it was almost 80. So what does that mean? Well, it got me to thinking about summer and terrestrial season. So what does terrestrial season mean for me here in Maryland? Well, it means ants and beetles and big hoppers. One of the most fun times of the year to fish. Now I have several hoppers that I routinely tie, but I wanted a new one. So I started flipping through my books and I found one tied by Al Beatty in the Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia. Now the one in here, it's called a squirrel hopper. It's really pretty close to a Henry's fork hopper if you're familiar with that one, except he has a foam wrapped body and squirrel tail for the wing. Now it's a really simple pattern, but it does have one technique that I don't do a lot of on here, and that's a deer hair head wrapped bullet style. So if you've ever been one to learn how to do that one, I think you're gonna like this pattern. All right, everybody, there we go. In the vise, the squirrel hopper. Pretty cool looking pattern. I'm kind of digging this thing. I've never fished it, but I'm gonna change that this spring. Now the recipe says size eight and a three extra long. So this is a size eight. I'm gonna go with my go-to terrestrial hopper, whatever this hook is, standard Kershank hook. It is a three extra long, and I'm gonna use yellow thread. I'd recommend whatever body color you use, try to match that thread if you can. We'll just put a base well around the bend. And I think one of the cool things about this body, it's just two millimeter foam. I've cut a little point at it just to, eh, it helps you tie it in. Probably doesn't really matter because you can squish this foam down pretty tight with just a few thread wraps. So let's get that caught in, then take our thread up, not all the way, maybe, you know, a little bit back because we've got a head going in front of it, but just wrap this like it was any kind of dubbing material or tinsel or whatever. And the cool thing about this is you can pull it tight if you want a really thin body, or you can not wrap it all that tight if you want a thicker body. And I kind of want a fairly thin body on this one, so I'm I'm not pulling it too tight, but you know, maybe a happy medium here. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine for a body right there. Let's catch this off. If you're using a light thread like I am, be careful because this 70 denier, it could cut through foam if you're not careful. But we got a little nub right there we can bury, so I think we're caught in pretty well. Now, next thing we're gonna catch in, just some squirrel tail. This stuff right here, I'm not even gonna put it in my stacker because you can, if you're careful, you can take it off your, your tail pretty even. Now, I will put a little bit of wax on here. You know, squirrel tail is pretty slippery. It does stack really well if you want it to, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna catch this in a little bit past the foam, maybe a little bit past the bend of the hook even. And I'm not gonna do that trick where I put one wrap just around the hair and then around the hair and the hook. Because if it spins around a little bit on me, I don't mind in this case. I don't mind with this hopper if some of this, this wing is off to the sides. Doesn't look like it really was anyway, but I think we're still fine. I'm gonna lift this up and try to cut it pretty short, but maybe at a little angle if I can get it. And if you can, it just helps make this underbody a little bit smoother. But leave your thread up front for this next part. That's gonna be our deer hair. So this is really, I think, the only tricky thing about it. You'll want a pretty good sized clump of deer hair and put it in your stacker. And you can tell it's stacked pretty well if the butt ends are all, you know, unaligned like that. And one tip here, open it up with your tips pointing forward. See that, that did, did stack pretty well. If you can open it up and take it out of your stacker in such a way that it will minimize how many times you have to switch hands, it does make it a little bit easier. So this, you, this you kind of just have to measure. We want this hair, when we fold it back over, we're gonna tie it in pointing forward, but when we fold it back over, we want it to be maybe halfway down that wing. So what is gonna be halfway? Probably about right there. So that is where I'm going to tie it in right here. And I'm going to just really just kind of push it all the way around this hook to uh, you know, kind of a loose wrap. And then, you know, maybe my second wrap, let it spin all the way around. 
And my goal here, I'm still holding the holding it on the back because I don't really want it to spin on the back, but I do want it to spin on the front. It's kind of how you do these bullet head flies. Now, let's see if I can lift this up, you know, get all my deer hair here without getting that squirrel tail. Okay, I haven't gotten them all, but I've gotten most of them, so I'm gonna put just a couple more wraps right here. Just really lock it in. I still haven't let go of this yet. And I'm gonna reach in here and cut these all off as short as I can. Probably can't do it in one whack, and that's fine. Let's just get them all, as many as we can, and we'll have a few more to trim in just a second. See that, we got it pretty short, but I didn't get them all, so let's finish the, these up right here. Okay, I think we're fine right there. I'm gonna spend a few thread wraps just to try to bury this in right here, get me a little bit smoother. It doesn't really matter, but it will just make it a little bit easier for this next step. Okay, so leave your thread pretty far back. And you can't really see the, the head, the eye of our hook right there, but I can kind of see it. And between the eye and my thread, that's how big our head's gonna be. So kind of judge that. Let's get our, you know, maybe right there, I think it's gonna be fine. And what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna try to push all these back and some of them might be too short. They might end up popping out on us. But this is just kind of how you do a, a bullet head fly. Now I'm gonna pull my thread, pull it out a little bit so I can put some loose wraps right here. This part of it, I don't really want it to spin around. All right, now after I've got several wraps, I can put a few tight ones. See those, I did have a couple that were too short and they popped up on me, but that's fine, we'll just trim those. All right, before I go to my next step, I am going to put a whip finish on it, just to maybe a three turn right here. I'm not gonna cut my thread, but I do have a whip finish. In case I accidentally do cut my thread, it's not gonna unwind on me. So the next step, we're gonna just trim some of this off the bottom. Okay, I think that's fine right there. Maybe a couple extra thread wraps just for fun. Now let's take some legs on it. And the last few I've done, I've used brown. I think brown looked fine, but I'm gonna do olive. We'll just see how that looks. So this is just standard rubber, silly legs. I tied a knot in it. I'm gonna catch the knot in at the back. That kind of gives you that natural bend. Pull enough thread out. I can do two loose wraps right here. So I've got that one in with a couple of loose wraps. Now I'll do one here on my side, about the same length here. Okay, now take a look at that. If, you, if they're oriented how you like, go ahead and spend a few more wraps on it. Now you might wanna trim the front ones to size before you do your whip finish. That way they will be out of the way when you're doing it. Now trim the back of the legs if you need to. I think we're fine right there. I like the length of those. If I put any head cement on it, I just flip it upside down and put a drop right there and let it wick down into those thread wraps. So there you go, folks. Pretty cool fly, not that hard to tie. I appreciate you watching, but hey, stick around. We're gonna do something really cool right now. All right, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. I know a lot of you probably don't because, you know, I look at the metrics, I know what the average view duration is, but I want to do something kind of fun here. And I want to call this, I guess, uh, Name the Fly or maybe Fly History Trivia, but with prizes. And the prize for this one, it's going to be a hat. Cool Savage Flies hat. I'll let you pick the blue and gray one or the khaki one, whatever you want. So how I want to do this, I'm about to ask a question and the first person with the right answer in a comment, I'll send you the hat. So here's the question. What is this pattern called and who is it named after? Now, please don't go back and watch the video of me tying this thing. That was almost a couple of years ago. It was one of my earliest videos and it was not a really good one. All right, everybody, that's it. I really appreciate you watching. For those of you who stuck around this far, I really, really appreciate it. Y'all take care and see you in a couple of days.